She's not wimpy, guys. Look at her pulling that road in. We dropped off the propane tank for 12 bucks. They're gonna fill it no matter how full or empty it is. Just fine with me. And uh, they'll have it back here by four o'clock. Oh, same day. It's awesome. Yep. This is fantastic. I love this place. It's awesome. Here. Yeah, this is called Corner Value and it is on Stratton Drive. Yeah, it's just a, a five, ten minute walk from all the marinas there. And uh, super, super good place. I'm right next to the hardware store, too. And both of the grocery stores are like right by it also. Yeah, just a block away. After dropping off the propane tank, we continued our search for spark plugs. So they knew the right plug, but they're out of it. <laughs> We've got like boxes of every plug, except there's this big box that's empty. And that's our plug. They said, it's a really common plug. That's why we're out of it. So they told us, you might check the other place, which is like two miles down the road where we just came from. They did uh, look up the numbers for us though of the, the plugs we need. Um, but this is the only place that seemed to carry the champion plug, so I don't know. So it's not that we have a weird plug or a plug hard to find. It's that everywhere is out of half of their inventory at all times. So that's the, that's the real problem we're facing here. It's that everybody lets themselves run out of everything too often. But, on we go. We stopped in at Napa Auto Parts looking for spark plugs. They were out of both of the options that fit our engine as well. Like, oh yeah, we know that plug. Oh, we don't have it. Like everybody else. We're like, yeah, has it. we're not surprised. <laughs> Nobody's got it. Yeah, so we've been to two, three, four, like four different places looking for this. Here yeah. today. Yeah. Hopefully the um, one guy can order it in. Yeah, he was gonna try. He called three places that were out of it, but he had like one more place that wasn't sure if they had it or not. Which doesn't sound very likely, but he said if they had it he'd order it in and get it here tomorrow. Alright. We got our old plug and three replacements from a gas station. We, yeah, we went on a weird, long scavenger hunt. Oh my flying. gosh, yeah, like, we're like one automotive store, and they're like, no, no, but check these other guys, go to them. No, no, but check these other guys. It was like, like skipping further and further out of town. Yeah, we've, I mean, been, we've been looking for these since... For two months. We started our search today at around... 10 o'clock? Yeah. 10 o'clock this morning and it's now 1.30. And I've been trying to find these in every town we come to. And no luck. But it was funny. We walk in the store and we're kind of waiting in line. And there's this older gentleman behind the counter. And he just sees the plug in my hand. He's like, that's one of those old two-cylinder, two-stroke uh, Evan Roots. <laughs> I was like, yeah. He's like, oh yeah, those are great engines. We got the plugs for those. <laughs> That was great. But yeah. one of the other one of the other guys um, at an automotive shop had already called them for us to check and see that they had one and they did. They actually had three. So we lucked out we got their last three. The last three on the island. Yeah. <laughs> Close call. Hopefully they'll work. Yeah, they'll work. <laughs> it's so cold. Yeah. It's really hot out here. We've been walking for like six hours today. Here you go. go ahead, drink some. Oh, so cold. Oh man, that's really nice. We got our propane back. The fuel dock's open tomorrow. We just checked. So we're we're ready to go.
And it's gone. Gone. We didn't make it very far. The shop's right there. Yeah. The next day we crossed the final item off our list. We finally got fuel. Also spark plugs, groceries, propane, and even an orange soda. All in all, Marsh Harbor is a great anchorage and was a fantastic place to spend my birthday. Our next anchorage is going to be a little bay on the southwest end of nearby Guana Key. You want me to help you launch it? Yeah. Okay. Oh, it's raining. I like flying the drone. Yeah, it's your favorite toy. Look how pretty it is up over there. We just left Marsh Harbor, which is a fantastic spot to reprovision. Probably the best we found, honestly, was better than Florida. <laughs> Everything was so close and easy to find. It was yeah. great there, and the prices were really reasonable. It was a very clean town. Extremely clean town. Uh, decent sidewalks, unlike Nassau, and uh, just uh, a really nice vibe, and tons of restaurants. More good restaurants than we've seen in all the rest of the Bahamas combined by triple. Literally, not even a joke. It was a, it was a great spot to hang out for a few days. Now we're at Great Guanakee. Um, we're kind of by the uh, west end of the island in a little bay that's really nice and protected right here. And uh, we're liking it a lot. And we're just cooking a little bit of lunch. Actually, Kenzie already ate mac and cheese for lunch. But I'm making some lunch, which will probably last us uh, for dinner too. We'll take a look over here. We've got some delightful pesto with some zucchini and onions in it uh, made with whole wheat noodles and lots of butter on it and made with this pesto sauce here. It's actually really fantastic and we're going to put some, uh, some little cubes of smoked cheddar cheese on top for just a little bit of extra flavor as well. There it is, my first helping of pesto on this trip. I'm really excited for pesto. It's a flavor I haven't really had on the trip so far, and variety is a really important thing. That's oh, really good pesto. It's a lot easier to make pesto out here than spaghetti, because spaghetti's just not right without like 
50% ground beef in it or sausage or something and pesto stands really well on its own. The only thing I wish I had was some Parmesan cheese but this smoked cheddar is doing a really nice job of supplementing that. Mmm. Mm-hmm. So good. What did we go to last time? 175. Yeah, let's do that again. That worked out just about right. So what we're doing is setting out a, a secondary stern anchor. There's just a little bit of current flowing past us, which is fine when the tide and the wind go the same direction. But when they reverse and they oppose each other, our boat does nasty things. So we're gonna put out stern anchor, keep it facing the right direction, keep us from wrapping the keel. So Kenzie's let out uh, about 175 feet of anchor road off the bow. We drifted back on it and I'm gonna toss out our secondary anchor which is a really crappy Lumar Claw remake and it's the one It has, it has nothing to do with being a reproduction of a Lumar Claw, it's just that the Claw style anchors suck. All the old style anchors, the plows, the Claws, they're terrible compared to the new style spade anchors, um, you know, with the sharp points and a good scoop on them. But it's all we've got, so we're going to use it. We just have to put out a ton of scope to make it work. Basically enough scope that there's so much bungee effect stretch in the rope that it doesn't ever get yanked on hard enough to to drag because it'll drag. <laughs> uh, we've already seen it drag 20 feet under pretty mild conditions in good holding sand. So we don't really trust it for anything except to hold our butt end downwind. So now that I got this one dropped in, Kenzie will go forward and pull the, the bow anchor back in which stretches this line back out. We'll snug them both up and be held tight between the two. That rope going out okay? Yep. Yeah. She's not wimpy, guys. Look at her pulling that road in. Go back and have a look here. Feeding this line out nicely. Kenzie pulled us back in with the bow anchor till we were pretty snug. Then I put this on the winch and cinched it down even, even better. So now what we'll do is rig up a bridle so it pulls us in a straight line rather than kind of from one corner here. It's a pretty simple affair. It's just a, a loop of a, of a circle here of a rope uh, to make uh, the best the best system of pressics I've used. I've used lots of different pressics, and this is by far the simplest and the, the most functional as well. You loop it through itself three times. Two, three. So the inner part is in the middle, and the original loop here is on the outside. It sucks down, and when you pull on that, it will not budge a bit. Pull that out there. And then we've got another length of rope. We can loop onto that.
And what I learned through experience was that this needed to be close enough that the, the, the pair of lines couldn't dip down below, below the stern platform. First time I did the bridles, they were out about there and they could both loop under and get caught in the rudder or something if we did turn sideways. So this works great. And now this has pressure on it, it's just, it might as well be welded to that other rope. It's not gonna move at all. One of those lines would break before it budged. Yeah, so I feel a lot better. We're gonna take a little dinghy ride to the beach, walk on the sand, maybe take a little swim, relax. It's been kind of a hot day, so that'll be really nice. So we're at the western edge of Guanakee on the south side. Just a beautiful anchorage and a bunch of just absolutely gorgeous new homes going in. Golf course, tennis courts and everything we could see from the air, uh, from the drone. But man, what a spot. Just beautiful here. And a couple of pretty shells. I don't know if the camera can quite catch that, but that's sort of a different one. Never seen one like that before. And this one's got little spikes all over it. It's got kind of a concrete growing on in there. What a spot. It's just beautiful here. It's beautiful here. There's our treasures. This was a pretty awesome beach for finding shells, actually. Yeah, it was. This one's super smooth and shiny. Yeah. It's got a cool texture inside, too. Yep. Oh, we broke one, didn't we? Mm, I think a lot of oh, this one. Yeah. Did super. you have it in your pocket or something? No, I had them in my hands and then you went fast and I went oh, trying to hold on. Because uh -huh. you didn't expect us to go on plane. 